All right. I want to ask you about your business and, and how you've built a life of, of play and, and been able to, to make money at this. But before we go there, I think it's interesting as an art teacher, um, how you foster creativity and connection, because this show is all about play for adults as well. And I think sometimes we forget that there are connections made here and that you mm -hmm. learn to share crayons with your siblings is an interesting life skill that you're, you're building there and, and learning how to communicate and, and get what you want with others. Do you have any tips for uh, maybe how you create an atmosphere that allows people to express themselves or to connect with others and, and doesn't create a rigid or stressful environment with art? Um, in regards to kids or adults or... I feel like they're all the same. Adults okay. are just kids in big people yes, clothes. Yeah. Absolutely. I constantly have to remind my students. Um, I think as kids, and then we, like you were saying, we don't care what people think, if it's good or bad, but at the older we get, the more we care about people's opinions. And so I'm constantly having to remind them that your artwork is your own and it doesn't actually matter what anybody has to say about it because you're the only person that can produce that piece of art that you're creating. And I think the individuality in that and um, really gives the opportunity for people to shine. Um, you know, if you were to Google like crazy art, I mean, wasn't there like a banana that was sold for millions of dollars last year on a canvas? So. I think we just need to like not be hard on ourselves and I'm always encouraging kindness um, for kids to uh, recognize their other students, like what they appreciate about their friend's artwork and, you know, like, oh, I love that shade of color or that's that's a really cool shape that you drew or however, you know, it is. Um, because when we realize that what we've made is actually appreciated by somebody else, it does form that connection. and lets us be a little more vulnerable, I think. Last question on this topic. When, why do you think adults stop drawing? I think most people mm -hmm. stop when they were, you know, stopped being required to in, in school or other things. And even really talented young people mm -hmm. uh, kind of give it up and, and they go, oh, well, I can't be an artist or I can't just paint for fun as a, as a hobby or draw as a hobby as an adult. Why do you think people stop playing with crayons. Yeah, I agree. It's sad. I think it's really sad. Um, I think, I don't think society recognizes, it, Einstein has a quote. It's a very simple quote that I can't think of right now, but it's something about play being one of the highest forms of intelligence. And um, I think we're such a do society that we overlook um, the gift of just like doodling or, um, being able to have the free time I, because schedules and all the lists of things that we have to do, it's like, oh, I don't have time to do something that doesn't matter. Like just letting my brain release some doodles or, you know, but even in, I was telling one of the teachers the other day, I had a third grade class come in and I actually brought, I designed a poster for them to color and I couldn't believe how excited the whole class got to just color the entire time. I had never seen them so um, like united. They weren't bickering, like everybody was loving it. And I said to the teacher, I was shocked how much these third graders loved coloring. And she said, well, that's because they're kids and all we do is schoolwork all day long. They don't have the opportunity to just play and have fun, which made me sad. But at the same time, I was so happy to be able to you know, offer that to them. I think it's the same thing for adults. If Absolutely. you're listening yeah. or, or watching that, I mean, just buy one of Shannon's kits at creativecrayonsworkshop.com and do something for the summer for your office or, or to take a yeah. break and let people just connect and relax. And yeah. whether that's have lunch or have a drink and just color for yeah. an hour. And it, it's amazing when you let your guard down and you let your mind mm -hmm. focus on something else and using your hands yeah. that, uh, a lot of creativity and a lot of connection and just de-stressing comes mm -hmm. from. That. Yeah, and it is. There's so much research on how stress melts away with coloring. It's phenomenal. Yeah, and it's so easy. It's like we 
we pay all this money for therapy when you could just grab something in color, <laughs> you know? Yeah, five, <laughs> five bucks for some crayons and some yes. paper. Um, that's awesome. Now, tell me about the the business. What made you decide to start selling these online and, and how did that go at the beginning? So um, we decided to just give it a shot at a local barbecue festival, the crayons that we had been making. And um, at that very first festival that we did, we had a local store approach us and ask if we would make these to sell in their store. So that told me that something was up about this, you know? And so we just, we kept on that path for a while. Um, and then we opened up a website because I realized websites are um, much easier on my time than, you know, packing things up and setting up big shows. And then with the coloring, um, I think about three years into it, because we're almost six years old now. And so about three years into it is when we started doing the coloring designs. And we initially only did holidays. We started with, um, it was Halloween. And so we did a giant coloring table cover for Halloween. And then that went so well. I said, we need to design this for Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know. And then after that, it, it just, I just kept listening to what people's needs were. And it ended up morphing into, um, we now have a subscription because people wanted something for every month to, to look forward to, which with my four kids, I always have to battle to get them off a of screen. So it's so nice to have something to offer them that we can all do together. And um, yeah, that's been one thing. And then birthday parties, which I never planned to happen. People just love having a coloring feature at their birthday party. So it's really special because, you know, it's like, oh, it's my kid's first birthday and this is the theme. And, you know, they'll look back in 20 years at those pictures. And I just think it's so cool to be a part of that. <laughs> that is awesome. And I, I love that you just uh, expanded when I know when people are asking for stuff, that's what makes it the best, right? You don't have yeah. to come up with really yeah. hard thinking and design or like workshopping and doing research about what people right. like. just, Hey, we're making cool stuff and people keep asking for more of it. Yes. Keep doing that. And <laughs> as long as you make enough money to keep doing it, then yeah. you're on the right path. Right. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. the idea of the subscription too, because mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan of those boxes like Kiwi crate and Oh yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Mark Rober has one for science. I, I jumped that one a little bit early. I think that subscription was mostly for me this year, but <laughs> My nieces are enjoying the toys after I build them, <laughs> but I went to like eighth grade level and they're in kindergarten. Um, but I, I love coloring with uh, my niece too. Uh, Sydney, since she was, you know, one or, or mm -hmm. two, have, have been coloring together. And we, I think we did Easter egg contests uh, last oh. year and, uh, you know, had the grandparents judge. And unfortunately, I think they could tell <laughs> which one was made by their granddaughter. Uh, so I'm still you know, disputing that victory of hers, but uh, it's a blast. And I, I think having something fun like that is a much better than a Netflix subscription or yes. something else. You're just yeah. paying a few bucks a month and you get something new and creative and it's an excuse to get together and sit down and get excited that the new, uh, you know, gift game. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we, our kids age range, our oldest is 13 and our youngest is six. So for a 13 year old girl to open up and talk to you, it gets a little bit harder. But when I, when I get these out, genuinely it takes a few minutes but her guard comes down and she starts to talk to us you know like it's it's magical <laughs> i love that and i would say as an an uncle i don't have any kids so it's mm -hmm. a great excuse for me on these subscriptions to be like once a month the new one's in let's get together yes. and and spend some time together and do these yeah. together and it's great that our parents will save them and then they look forward mm -hmm. to it too and the next time we get to, to get together and it's a nice reminder all year round. Cause otherwise you're just kind of doing, you know, birthdays and holidays and, yeah. and big occasions, which is fine too, yeah. but it's a nice cool excuse to, to be like, this is our thing. I got this gift for us to right. do together all yep. year round. Mm -hmm. uh, that's super fun. How much do you include your children in the business side of things? They are completely involved. <laughs> that's so, awesome. That's so yeah. Cool. Yeah, they are. They, not only do they come up with ideas, um, they help pack our orders every day. They like going to the post office to ship things. Um, they they take a lot of pride in it. I mean, sometimes they're annoyed. I you were going to say they took all of the profit. Uh, 
No, they think there's pride in it. It's better. Pride. They'd love the profit. <laughs> but it's nice too, since they're younger, we can, you know, my my older one wants the cash, which I get. But my younger kids, it's like screen time or, you know, they see like, if I put this work into this, then I can have this as a reward, you know? So it's pretty cool. Uh, that's awesome. And uh, I think you have some workshops now where you help other people do it too. Have you found out any tips or tricks or I'm sure you've learned a ton about selling online over the last six years too. Anything you want to share there? About like selling products online or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely don't do it alone. I started alone and, um, there's so many communities that could have saved me so much time and so much mistakes that I made. And I learned from all of it and I'm, I'm, I am where I am because of that, but, um, you don't have to do it alone. So I would say for sure, be in a community, um, and just don't doubt yourself, you know? I think, mm. and and when you're in a community, you also have those cheerleaders instead of just staying in your own head. And well, that's not, you know, you, just as adults, we second guess ourselves already, but when you're putting yourself out there and some, you're selling something that you're not sure how people are going to respond with, um, I would say just go for it and be confident. 